Uh, I'm Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls. Hi, I'm Alonso Ramirez Ramos. I'm a storyboard artist on this show. Hi, I'm Matt Brawley. I was also a storyboard artist on this episode. And who storyboarded this sequence we're watching right now? Alonzo did. That was me. Yeah, I did the silly string <laughs> these, thing. <laughs> these are these amazing expressions on their faces could only have come from Alonzo. Also, I think this is some of the best animated silly string I've ever seen. Right. There, there's a mouth shape coming up that I don't think we use very often. Right, oh, right there. there is. The little octopus mouth. The little. <laughs> like, it's just the, if anyone at home wants to draw that mouth, uh, it's just a three. Oh it's man, I, I love this. Number Three. Love this stand stuff right here. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, the comedy gold came from that little sequence. I mean, I, we use it all the time. <laughs> something we say, something we say a lot. Um, so uh, this episode is one of my favorites of the season. It was one of the hardest episodes to break. Um, in the writers' room, this was originally called like I think the the party monster or something. We knew we wanted to do an episode that took place during like. Like, w Gravity Falls is a show about monsters. It's also a show about, like, relatable childhood memories. And to me, the most terrifying memory is the idea of going to a school dance. Um, Very I think, scary. Yeah, it's something we've all experienced. And uh, particularly, I think animators were more likely to be the wallflowers and not the guy coming uh, What are bug. you saying? <laughs> I mean, I'm speaking for myself, probably. Maybe you were a dance machine, but I was a lot more, like, Dipper, um, scared of dancing. And so I only became a dance machine in recent years. <laughs> That's true, actually. You're talking about DDR, right? Um, <laughs> But uh, we, we thought, like, that's a great location for an episode. It's like a school dance. Obviously, it takes place in the Mystery Shack during oh, the here's summer. Here's a handcoming life. This was also boarded by Alonzo. You did an amazing job. This that is was a great so cold fun. Open. That was my funnest. I, I love... You made this uh, so much creepier than I... <laughs> we, we when I wrote this, creepy. I never imagined it would be the bubbling hand. Oh, my God. I did not predict how gross it would be. Um, <laughs> But uh, our, our challenge with this was we needed to come up with a story that was like a school dance, and there, there's no school, so we just we came up with a totally dumb Grunkle Stan throwing a kid dance, right? Yeah. <laughs> because he thinks it'll attract with a character like that, you can kind of believe he. And he, and then we actually came anything. up with a different place in the mystery shack that didn't exist before, which is this like parlor. Yeah. Which is like at the time we were not sure where how, it would be. Where it would be. We eventually we figured out it. that it was the. We decided okay, there's a all-purpose big room. So that's that's the room where they fight the clones, or that's the room where they fight the wax guys and headhunters. And that's like, as we were working in the background, we just decided, okay, we've got a random room. It's called the parlor. It's got a, a rhinoceros it's in it. Rhino sometimes head. you're killing wax, uh, wax figures. Sometimes you're doing a school dance. Um, but the, the thing that was such a challenge about this episode, the reason we had a hard time breaking it was, we were thinking, well, it's, it's easy to think of a, a party story for Mabel. What's Mabel going to do? Well, she's going to make friends, first of all, and she's probably going to compete to be the party king because she loves partying. Dipper hates partying, so what's his story going to be? And originally we said, oh, Dipper doesn't want there to be a party. So Dipper's going to hide up in the attic, and the whole time he's going to try to stop the party, and he's going to conjure a monster who stops the party. And there was a version where he conjured Bill Cipher oh, to wow. stop the party. This is wow. early? Yes. Early on. Yes. Um, there was a version where he contacted like a, some kind of ghost, um, like the ghost of some dead dance style or something. Um, and no matter every version we wrote sucked because Dipper was totally unlikable. Right. Like I was trying to be honest to my experience as a kid and I was like, I hated dances. I wanted to get away from them. Dipper's like me. He's inspired by me. So Dipper's not going to, not going to want to go to a dance. And, right. and it broke us. And for like a month, this episode was like stalled out. It was, nobody could write it. And then at the last second, somebody was like, okay, well, Alex, I know that you don't dance, but what if Dipper's a little more naive than you? And he just wants to dance with Wendy and that's his conflict. And it was like, yeah. wait, Dipper wants to dance with Wendy. If that's his conflict, then what's getting in his way? What if Dipper's getting his own way by overthinking it? Uh, how do we manifest that through animation? What if it clones? Because that's the idea of getting in your own way. And in like an hour, we broke the entire story after a month of being stalled out just because we allowed Dipper to be like more kind of naive than I was at that right, age. Right, and he was extra planny and everything. And I think even Mabel says it here, like you're getting on, on, in, on your getting way. Getting in your own way, yeah, all of yeah. these lists. Like that's where the episode came from. I just have to call it that scene where Mabel was mwah, 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 pantomiming, smooching. I believe Alonzo <laughs> yeah, boarded this, that as I well. I did the first act and Matt uh, took over the second act. Yeah, we used to split we them right down the middle. Right in the middle. Um, So this was one of your guys', this was the third episode you had done. And yep. You know, you guys were very new to television storyboarding, and you were a First team. First time, baby. What was it like working as a team on this script together? Alonzo and I are really good friends, so it was always a delight to work together. But it's challenging, man, to like take half a script, board it, and then glue them together at the end. 
Right, right. I think it was very satisfying seeing, seeing it come together. Especially, uh, we were dealing very early on with the characters. You know, Pacifica's introduced in this episode. Oh, yeah, this which, is her introduction. I know, oh, she crazy. became such a fun Who's character. Who's like one of our favorite characters. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, by the way, we love Pacifica from the beginning. Absolutely. But it took Alex a while to really like, get to know her and love her. <laughs> so I, yeah, I when I when we first came up with Pacifica, like we were just like, okay, she's the opposite of Mabel. She's a, she's totally right, mean and awful. Right, right, and right. and afterwards, I remember me and Mike feeling like, oh, we created a lame stock TV character. We created a stereotype with no dimension. Um, and then. Uh, we felt a little bad, like we guys are giving you the Pacifica scene, and you came back with this wonderful boarding. Like th there was such a sense of personality and like physical. Like you felt like there was something a little bit more substantial than what we had written in the way that it was boarded. And you guys continued to see that the there was more in to her. Pacifica, and partially from your urging and from your great drawings is why we in the writers' room said, "Let's let's try again. Let's yeah. let's see if we yeah, can." Yeah, yeah. It, until we got to like Northwest Manor, where we finally made her an actual character. And Candy and Granda this show up intro. for the first. Time. Yeah, this is their intro as well. And yeah, I got to give, um, again, I know you're here, I'm singing your praises, but I got to give Alonzo credit for, I mean, this is the introduction of Pacifica, Candy, and Grenda. And Absolutely. you're boarding these new characters and basically breathing life into how they're presented. Like so much of who they are, it comes from the spirit of how these were boarded. Oh, this um, is <laughs> This used to be a much longer scene. And Alonzo did such a good job and we had to cut it for time. Um like this is this is one of those episodes. There's some episodes this season where we were stretching because the story was really simple. This episode we loved so much and had so many great ideas. Dipper with his clones, Mabel with her friends, and the party. That like when the first cut of this came back, it was maybe three minutes over. Right. We had to keep cutting and cutting, and we it had to do a it lot of hurt cutting. us to cut it because there's okay, so much I good think. work. I think it was very satisfying uh, to really just get to explore them for the first time, and I wanted to her make her over the top. And really, like, just like shameless, you know, and, like <laughs> on your face, you know. I like she backs up into the shadows, you know. Like, well, I think uh, you, you, what you, I think what you brought to Pacifica that we weren't imagining is that, like, we were just having her be what she needed to be for the plot, which is this conflict. But you added the idea that she loves being like this. Like, she's clearly like she's so shameless. She's having fun being the worst character in the world, and I think that really helps. Little note to people watching: there's a character dancing in the background who's got a, a sweater. He's got a sweatshirt. He's kind of got. A pig nose, messy hair. That's a caricature of a uh, Michael Rianda. And he's the ultimate party person. Yeah. So we had to have him. That's true. He's not here right now, but um, uh, pretty much any episode that has partying. Um, me and Mike, Michael's not here in this commentary, but he, he and I were watching the TV series Party Down, which, it, you know, uh, for those of you uh, adults watching, um, really funny, underrated classic uh, television series about a bunch of party caterers who wear these black bow ties everywhere we go. That's why we wanted them to be wearing oh, yeah. black bow ties was a reference to Party Down. And we just realized that, like, that what's so amazing about that show is every single episode is they're catering an event. And we realized like social events make for great sitcom stories mm -hmm. and like you could do a whole series where every episode's a party because there's so much so many social stakes in a party um all right here it happens this is the beginning of the cloning um and is at what point in the episode uh, alonzo you you boarded this next sequence as well is that right, right? yeah and this is where we introduced tyrone um, uh, that's stuff, a, this stuff's so good. This is well <laughs> done. So uh, the name Tyrone, it was written by one of our um, our writers, Zach, uh, Zach Piaz. That was his joke. Um, actually, it was either him or Tim McKeown. Maybe it was Tim. I don't want to... It's either one of them, and they did a great job. Right. I think also it was really fun. Uh, once we started boarding... This expression. That's the best expression. <laughs> and you did a great job on that. Uh, Matt and I talked about this episode and how we're going to distinguish the clones and coming up with the idea of the numbers on the, the hat. numbers. That was a great That idea. was a great visual idea. We really needed that since uh, Dipper's hat is so iconic, having the... Uh, the pine tree there. We just had him with an empty hat and then putting the numbers. And then our art director made all the clones slightly like more muted. The yes. colors like are faded and it just it just turned out so beautiful. Yeah, it was such a great piece of art direction that the clones were just a little bit paler as though the copying process that had lost something. Um, and that was I do remember it, I think it was it, was it you guys who suggested the idea of the numbers on the hat? I don't uh, I, that was I not think, in the script. I or? think it was it was mentioned or like not fully I, I, figured out. But I just like, know there was like 
There was somebody who saw that and said it doesn't make sense. Why didn't his hat copy? And I said we're using it anyway because right. it's such a good exactly, idea. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think, I think we had to really discuss it. Like, Alonzo, you added that gag of Seuss playing the trumpet, the right? Trumpet. That, that was not in the script. Absolutely. That was just something. And that that boarding is oh is, man, that punch. You amazing. feel it. You feel it. It's so sad. <laughs> um, the uh, I think you know. One of the things that I think one of the reasons I love this episode so much, aside from the great work that everybody did, is that Dipper is a really um, straight men characters, as we've like characters who the, the, the term straight man in comedy, where there's the funny person and the straight man, like they're really hard to write because they're often not super funny. And Dipper was a character that we were still trying to figure out at this point. And by making by forcing Dipper to spend time with himself, it forced us to actually solve who he was. And this idea of this guy who's kind of sweetly naive and agreeable and also really obsessive and neurotic, like. This is the episode where we're really wait, 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 wait. Here comes a breakout character. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea when I wrote this what he was going to look like, and I was so amazed when I saw the storyboard. <laughs> and, <disturbed>. <laughs> and he looked this screwed up. And we also have uh, Aaron Springer, who was the director. Aaron Springer was the director. And yeah. uh, Amazing. we were really inspired by his style and his comedy. <laughs> And a lot of those expressions came from him. <laughs> this is um, th this sequence features one of our kind of most memorable instances where we can't use actual songs without buying the rights, so we need to make up fake songs. So I remember there's a list somewhere where I wrote a bunch of these, like just like really dumb riff riffs on classic 80s songs. And "Don't Start Unbelieving" was I think the favorite from the list. Yeah. So that, that that's how. And that, that became a staple for the show. It became like yeah, every product, every. Fans type. really loved this this gag. Um, this idea that Mabel d fails a flip is 100% based on Michael Rianda's yeah. actual yeah, karaoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yes. a karaoke king. Every time we go to karaoke, he screams, he takes off his shirt, he knocks over tables. Uh, uh, and he's, that's for you guys! Uh, 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 We're making miracles happen! Yeah. We're making dreams come true tonight! Yeah, the um, intensity. This... Matt Brawley, this is your section now, right? Uh, it's coming up. Or is, it's, oh, it's almost yeah. not yet. It's almost there. Not yet. So basically, um, it was just it was two artists <laughs> doing boarding this entire episode. These two artists. So half of the episode was Alonzo. Half the episode was Matt. I think the um, second he he goes back gets to the out room. of this scene. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll the second over. the scene ends is when it switches to Matt. Yeah, I like having. Oh, there's, oh, there's Mike. The Mike oh, on the Mike right. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> I was so, I don't think I imagined it this way in the script, but then when I saw the way this scene is boarded, when we go to Dipper's POV in a moment where he looks back and looks at Wendy, like that always, I thought was such a good decision. Oh, there it is. I'm like, I totally feel it. Like <laughs> you I'm like, like I'm not nervous. approaching her. I'm not approaching her. Yeah. And then that's a great little piece of action. And, and then we go to Matt. This now it's Matt. This is the switch. Yeah. Matt, talk about boarding this section. Um... So boarding the clones was incredibly fun for me just because like they had a certain way of rambling when they talk that was really, <laughs> really funny. And like, I love how they talk over one another. I think there's a, there's a point in the episode where someone says counterpoint, which is like one of my favorite yes. bits of writing. It's yeah. just really funny. <laughs> and this scene is hilarious with all the hands. All the hands. In. This is Aaron, Aaron Springer. Springer's oh. additions. Aaron Springer, comedy genius. genius, adding these like really clever little additions. Um, and I also got to give props to Brad, Brad Breek, our composer, who added this really kind of, it's almost like in the Hall of the Mountain King. This I doo, feel doo, like doo, that was doo, the doo, temp. Doo, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. it really worked out well. The way Dipper stands in this section, too, it was very iconic. Just like his, yeah, his feet close together. together. And like we also were figuring out the visual language and he's like sort of like posing for yeah. the character. And well, which became yeah. then the little mouth with the yeah. cheek. <laughs> you know, it just became so important for his uh, like This language. is this oh, is this one of my favorite amazing. Stan gags. Yeah, right. Like I'm gonna fall for yeah, that. Yeah. The, the, the timing. Well this is a this is a very classic <laughs> example of us us leaning into a trope where like Stan is basically Mr. Krabs. He would run after money, but it's so cartoony. Yeah. So we're gonna do the gag. We're gonna briefly call attention to it like I'm too smart for this <laughs> but no like, I'm not but how amazingly boarded was that like just panning to the different that clones thing, and I was then so it was just one shot that. and it, it was amazing it didn't I don't think that shot like changed at all like I, I can be Mr. Notes about stuff but like um, the way that Matt you boarded that like it basically stayed, stayed, stayed exactly the same and uh, now remembering there was a whole sequence in the bathroom maybe later coming at on, the very end had I, I want to draw special attention to that in the script it says a Japanese businessman <laughs> 
dancing furiously outside. Like that's just in the script. I remember being like, "You got it, man. You got it." That was uh, I will I will one hundred percent throw Mike under the bus. That was Mike's gag. Well, no, I get it though. It's like the business the, the businessman type who lets loose at a party. I think was the idea. Well, I, I think also part of it was just the idea that like there's just unexpected people at this party. Like it's getting yeah, yeah, bigger. Yeah. You know, um, this whole section is so well boarded. Dipper's so charming. That design of Wendy, young Wendy, with the pants hiked yeah, up to her chest and the fun. pigtails. Was, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, this is the birth oh, mark. Yeah. That's another nice thing about this episode is it was always in my mind that that was his nickname because of his wacky birthmark. And it was never meant to be some kind of deep destiny. Yeah. It was based on a kid I actually saw in middle school who had acne that was shaped like uh, constellations. But we didn't know that. You guys so didn't I know was that. like, no, 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 what no. is Dipper's birthmark going to be? And, you know, we started imagining all that. And you guys were surprised to discover that information. <laughs> um, a clone fight is not an easy thing to board and choreograph. Uh, Matt did an amazing, amazing job of all this and a great job of organizing this information because this could have gotten chaotic and yet there's these really clean, simple shots. They're all lined up in a straight line. Um, there's something interesting that happens where, you know, essentially storyboard artists on a show like this, they're the cinematographers, they're the animators, they're the actors. Like, so much of the filmmaking comes from the storyboard artists and what you get is... The personalities of the artist leaks into the characters. So, like, the thought process here is very matte, and the thought process in the first half with the clones together where they're kind of being sly, like, there's there's a lot of Alonzo in that. Um, oh, there's, uh, in that photo right there, That's that was a caricature of our uh, art director, Ian, um, that picture on the oh, wall. Oh, this guy is hilarious. It's so good. The cheese the and crackers. The cheese and crackers. And it's so detailed. You put so much, yeah. like, effort into it. I love these things, man. This was a nice bit of... Up. I think this was... Um, uh, I think this was uh, uh, Rianda's concept, and then I think Br Brawley boarded it like I, perfectly. And what I love about it is like Dipper is not being completely unkind to himself, you know. Like he's yeah, still yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. you know, it's got to treat the original yeah, well, man. Yeah, treat the original well, you know. Like <laughs> it just becomes a real character, even though if he's conflicted, he's still a really good, nice guy. Yeah, well, I think that's the best. In the best case scenario, collaboration is the best piece of everybody comes together. And I think, like, in an episode like this where you've got oh God, a jam. lot of people working hard and, yeah, this is <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is a little yeah, messed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, like you guys are really sweet, nice guys. And, like, Michael Rand is a guy with a huge heart. So it's, like, in an episode like this with everyone working together, you get a really likable Dipper. Like, even though what he's doing is, you know, e even though Dipper's making mistakes, like, he's still a really lovable dude. Uh, I love the kid fighting in the in the clone fight. Oh, like, how pathetic their fighting is! Yeah, like is. the 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 arm burns and the kind of like wet willy, like where they're like hitting the tummy and stuff. Like, oh, there's the sucker punch, clone fight. Yeah, that's awesome. This was so much fun to write. Yeah. Um, I really uh, enjoyed writing Dipper talking to himself because you get to you get him being able to predict what he's about to say, so you have this kind of <laughs> heightened level of awareness which you don't always have in cartoon dialogue, um, like. Oh, it's not me. It's not me. It's number seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, we used to, this clone fight used to be a lot longer. Um, there used to be a section where Dipper, like, Dipper and his, and his second clone run into the bathroom and he's trying to put his head underwater like right. he's trying to murder him. It was a little too dark. Yeah. I had to think of a way for him to kill all his clones without it being dark. Yeah, yeah. And it was driving me crazy and it was a very late uh, addition, this idea that, oh, okay, it's sort of an accident. I love He pops that. them with the party popper. Because, um, like, you know, sometimes the story calls for something that's out of character. Like this story calls for Dipper to murder 10 yeah, Dippers yeah, and still yeah, seem yeah, likable. Yeah. So blood. you have yeah. to make the fighting sweet and silly. You have to make, you know, you have to make him try not to hurt them. You have to make the fact that they got melted sort of an accident. Um, you know, uh, otherwise all this, all this Seuss DJ stuff was definitely uh, a lot of that came from Mike. I love Mabel's reaction after Pacific. Oh, this is born. Mabel's expression after. Yeah. <laughs> Mabel's still smiling. That is she's a, she's she's a smile. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's That's still great. trying. That's really yeah. Great. Trying to make and it work. And then also like broad Mabel's personality, you know, in contrast with Pacific, she just stands out how sweet and amazing she is. Yeah, I, I really felt like it was. I was really stressed out in the early days of the series, and I never stopped being stressed out. But there was a like a a, a stress. A stress level here that was sort of unmatched because I was like, how are all these pieces going to be come together? And this was one of the first episodes where I felt like the characters are alive. Yeah. Like, D Dipper really feels alive. Mabel feels alive. Like, everyone has a role to play. <laughs> like, s like Stan and Seuss, like, they don't wear out their welcome. They each have something to do here. Like, Wendy is just, just cool. Um, like, it, it all kind of came together. 
Um, and I know like when you see like top 10 lists of Gravity Falls, I feel like this isn't always the highest on the list because it's not some huge conspiracy. But I feel like this is the episode where like it, things really started to gel in a way that they hadn't previously on the series. I think we felt the same way boarding it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and like it was it was it, it can be really stressful when you, oh, you almost write a McGugget. script. <laughs> and, you know, you see it for the first time. You see it executed by a team, and you don't know. That's your first chance seeing did this work or not. Right. And I, I remember when we handed off this script, it was tied together by, you know, the skin of our teeth, and we didn't know if it was going to work. And then these two pitched the episode, and that was one of my best days on season two. I was like, oh, my God, this is fun. I love these guys. Um, like, the magic serves the story, and the story is right. sweet and relatable. Right. Well, and that's why when you talk about, like, the previous iterations of the story, we have a hard time, like, imagining Even imagining. That. Like, what? It was so natural. Yeah. Like, it was so broken um, and so many people worked on it so there's a, there's a, I feel like this act one has some really knockout jokes in it and I think that's partially because we wrote we had written so many versions of act one so it's like you've got that like that exit fee gag yeah, yeah. which is like a oh, great Dan McGrath funny. line super funny um, like you've got that like great f flyer that says free on yeah, it yeah. question mark like everyone uh -huh. everyone contributed on that um, but then like act two and act three were like written so quickly but you guys like made them come to life um, and this this was something where it, it it was always in my head that if there was a clone episode, it would end with like Dipper and himself. This the camaraderie between having, them is really awesome. I love the heart. shooting star. It's so <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Well, this is. I mean, I, again, it was like my memory of school dances was getting a soda, so I had something to do with my right, hands right, and my right. eyes, going into the farthest corner and either talking to my one loser friend who like we also we were both too scared right, to dance, right. or just having a deep loud internal monologue trying to drown out all the other social interaction and because i i definitely like i did then and i still do kind of talk to myself to work out problems sure um so like dipper and his clone feels very real to me um and i feel like this strikes the right balance of sad and ridiculous <laughs> this is also the second time in in only a few episodes that somebody melts before <laughs> dipper's eyes yeah. on the roof <laughs> This pour is, one out, pour one out. This is Dipper's, what, third day in Gravity Falls? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is Dipper's fourth or fifth day in Gravity Falls, and he's seen two two people melt before his eyes. Um. And we, we're seeing in this episode two really different uh, examples of social interaction. Mabel immediately making best friends for life, and Dipper needing to literally fight himself to death before he can just... Right, it's going to take him a while have to a moment. get there. But it opens up... What do you guys imagine when he goes in there? What do you think he does? I think he dances by himself. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Wendy dances with him? I don't think they dance together. No, together. no, 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 no. I, I always imagine that Dipper goes in there and he just starts awkwardly dancing. Yeah, that's sounds And Wendy accurate. from the couch goes like, woo, look at this guy. He's finally bought it around. And just starts like blasting those party poppers while he's dancing. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's canon now. That's, that's sort of what I picture happening. That's the good end. I'm just happy I got to design uh, Mabel's outfit for the dance party. That was really cool. Nailed it. <laughs>